The letter Yud is the smallest of all of the letters. And it is referred to as Hama'at Hamachzik et Merubah, the little that holds a lot. It is the first letter of God's name of four letters. So that tells us this is a very, very important, archetypal, powerful letter. The Arizal, the great Kabbalist of Tzfat, 500 years ago, explained that for an infinite God to create a finite world, it necessitated what was called Tzimtzum, a contraction. Because in a philosophical sense, where would an infinite God put a finite world? Sounds simple, but it's much more complicated than that. That God needed to, as it were, contract his infinite being to make place for a finite world. The letter Yud, more than any other letter, represents this concept of contraction. And that is why it's called the little that holds a lot. Now this is very similar to modern science's explanation of the Big Bang, where our present universe of tens of billions of galaxies, each with tens of billions of stars, we're told all came from an infinitely small point that exploded, the Big Bang. This is the Yud. This is the archetypal energy represented by the Yud in the worlds, in the souls, and on the level of divinity. The number Yud equals 10. And because of its importance as the first letter of God's name, and the fact that all 22 letters conceptually have a Yud in them, when you put the, the pen to the paper, that first point, that is the Yud. And just like science explains that all of physical reality is made up of atoms, and that if one wanted to envision all of creation, it's just, in a sense, a virtually endless series of atoms. But we look at the Yud in the same way. It's as if all of creation is an infinite series of Yuds. The Yud equals 10. We're told in Kabbalah, any number, when it's multiplied by 10, represents its full manifestation. So 10 is 10 times 1. In other words, the oneness of God is manifest in plurality through the letter 10. Thus, the number 10 of all of the numbers is one of the most important. And there are countless different ideas in our tradition that have 10 in them. On the level of worlds, we have the 10 expressions through which God brings the world into being. We're told in the, in, in also in our tradition that there were 10 things created on the first day. There were 10 things created at dusk of the sixth day. On the level of souls, we see that Abraham, the first Jew, had 10 tests, all of which he passed. And through that, he merited, as it says in the Torah, to inherit a land of 10 nations. Number 10 is the day of Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is called the holiest day of the year, and it comes out on the 10th day of the month of Tishrei. We give a tenth of our income to charity, and when we take our crops from the field, we also give a tenth in, in the ancient time before we could enjoy it. This is what's called tithing. 
on the level of divinity, we have the ten svirot, the archetypal emanations through which creation comes into being. We have the ten plagues through which God revealed his power and his, his caring and ability to act in the world. And this culminated when we came out of Egypt in God giving us the Ten Commandments. And we're told that all of the mitzvahs, all of the commandments of the Torah are contained within these Ten Commandments. A very, very profound meditation on the letter Yud is to look deeply inside and to understand how much potential is there, how much holiness is contracted within us, and to be able to focus on that and how to bring that into fruition and into the world.